Do you watch porn? Do you masturbate? If you do, then listen closely because I've got some bad news. Now, this is an uncomfortable topic to talk about. If someone in my family is watching, then please click off this video straight away. No fap. It's basically a meme at this point. No, it won't make you levitate. But here's what I learned from two years of no fap, and why I believe you should do it too. I'm going to use science to explain the benefits of no fap, the negatives of porn, and why some people claim to feel superhuman. Many people talk about the crazy benefits. More testosterone, woman attraction, mental clarity, girls will hold eye contact with you. And I do believe most of the benefits are true. But I think the main reason people feel so good is because they get rid of all the negatives. As Warren Buffett says, you only have to do a very few things right in your life as long as you don't do too many things wrong. I think the biggest problem is that you're actually engineering your brain for short-term pleasure. It's like smoking. Anytime you feel stressed or unhappy, you go and chase a quick moment of pleasure. If you want to be successful, that is the opposite of what you want to be doing. If you want to be successful, you need to be able to delay gratification. Delay gratification. Delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. You need to put off the rewards now so you can get the rewards in the future. So if you keep training yourself with that habit, that's going to translate into other areas of your life where anytime it gets hard, you're just going to look for the easy way out. And as Jocko Willink says, People look for the shortcut, the hack. The shortcut, the shortcut is a lie. The hack, the hack doesn't, doesn't get you there. So you need to be able to keep putting in the work in the future, even when it gets tough. That's how you're going to be successful and achieve things that are challenging. And it'll be worth it because the things people remember the most are the challenging things, not the easy things. That's unreal. And people at the end of their life are like, oh, I'm so glad I just sat on the sofa and watched Netflix. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Dopamine is a neurotransmitter which motivates us to do things. So if you do super stimulating things, like watching porn, then your brain will start to wire badly. There's the saying that neurons that fire together wire together. That basically means that the more you use these neuron pathways in your brain, they're going to get stronger and stronger and they're going to keep getting used to being used. So your brain's going to make you want to do it more and more. It's going to become more and more of a habit. So you want to kind of break this because it's just keeps you weak and you get such a massive surge of dopamine everything else in comparison seems boring this can lead to most very highs and lows where people feel very very pleasured and happy during the moment and afterwards they crash and feel terrible this is what many guys refer to as post nut clarity and this also gives a lot of as it says in the name clarity people have they suddenly realize what they're doing and what they have done and they often feel a lot of shame and guilt. Shame is the lowest emotion on the emotional vibration chart. It's even lower than guilt. Guilt is that you feel bad for doing something. Shame is that you feel bad for even existing. You feel worthless. So on NoFap, it's easier to do boring things like reading a book, working out, studying, whatever it is. Have you ever watched a dopamine detox video? You'll know this, they talk about it a lot. But basically, because your dopamine systems have been reset to how they're supposed to be, you don't have a, a ridiculous amount of stimulation, so normal things don't seem as boring as in comparison to the rush of dopamine you get from watching porn and ejaculating. I think this is quite an overlooked benefit, but you actually get quite a bit of time back. According to this survey, 59% of NoFap has reported watching 4 to 15 hours of porn per week. 4 to 15 hours. That's at like between half an hour and two hours a day. If you took that time and put that into working out or starting a business, after maybe a year or two, you're probably gonna have a pretty decent business or a good body. Or you just put that into anything else that's actually productive instead of negative. And like you see in this graph, do you want to be using compound interest exponentially going up or down? Your choice. So you can either use it as a negative thing or you can take that time from negative to positive. That's gonna have a massive difference. Many people also report they have a lot of brain fog when watching the porn. So when they stop, they have a lot of mental clarity. As I said before, a lot of the benefits seem to come from getting rid of the negatives and just returning to normal state. Many people know that people talk about increased testosterone, but from what the studies I've read, testosterone seems to increase after about a week and then seems to drop down again. But 
don't just focus on testosterone, it's how you feel that actually matters. Your testosterone might also increase, but not necessarily just from not ejaculating. Your testosterone might increase from decreased stress, shame and guilt from porn and fapping, and also from better sleep and taking care of yourself better, as your dopamine circuitry will start to rewire. I also used to think that the testosterone thing was true, but turns out not really. But also if you're lifting weights and doing other things to look after yourself, your testosterone will probably increase. The more accustomed your brain becomes to porn, the more and more you have to watch to get the same amount of pleasure, more and more extreme stuff. This also leads to more shame because you're like, what the hell am I watching? Other negatives include looking at sex badly and also treating women like sex objects. Another reason is just weird. If there was two people having sex in a room and you're sitting in the corner, I really hope you wouldn't be masturbating to them doing it. Or was Ice Cold JT? I used say? to stroke my <laughs> <pizza> three times <laughs> a day for eight years straight, but I went to town. Boring and meaningless without busting nuts. So There's also evidence that watching porn decreases sexual performance as you're watching other people do it and you're not actually doing it yourself. There are good data to support the idea that if your brain learns to be aroused by watching other people have sex, it is not necessarily gonna carry over to the ability to get aroused when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody else. Especially young kids who are consuming a lot of pornography, the brain is learning sexual arousal to other people. You're a bystander, an observer, you're not actually participating in it. This can create challenges in sexual interactions with a real partner. So yeah, it's weird. Just stop it, boys. Boys. Try and go a week at least, maybe even try a month. That's when most people report the benefits after a month. Won't be easy, but it's worth it, trust me. Is how to quit porn for good. The first thing is do not take digital devices into the bathroom or bedroom with a closed door. I cannot stress this one enough. In the book Atomic Habits, James Clear breaks down into four parts of habits. The cue, the craving, the response, the reward. The cue is the thing that activates your brain that gives you the idea of doing an activity. For example, if you're scrolling on TikTok or Instagram and you see some girls, then that might trigger your brain to think, oh, we're on our phone, we're in the bathroom, you know what time it is. But that is not what you want. If you, if you remove the cues, it's gonna be hard to do the habit. Your brain's not gonna fire as hard. If your phone's like on the other side of the house, turned off, you're going to the, to the toilet or in your bedroom, then there's a lot more friction and you're probably not gonna be as likely to do it. You'll be able to catch yourself and stop yourself. Whereas if your phone's right there and it's a habit you already have, then you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle. Now I'm not saying it's easy, there's this thing in our brain called the limbic system which is basically hardwired to go after sex and keep us alive basically just to reproduce. Now that's why it's important to bring in things like more friction because that shifts the thinking to the other parts of your brain which are more logical and not just driven by animalistic instincts. That's why there's post-nut clarity because you go from the limbic system like yeah 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 reproduce make kids make kids then you stop you're like damn that wasn't actually the real thing what have I just done this is just weird. The next one is you want to take that energy and put it into something else. For example, I find a lot of guys find that anytime they get an urge, if they hit push-ups and take a cold shower, the urge seems to disappear because they've fatigued themselves and taken the energy out of them. Now, I'm not sure if there's too much science around this topic, but there's this idea of sexual transmutation. In this book, Outwitting the Devil, it talks about it. It states, the question is, how can one master the emotion of sex? By a simple process of transmuting that emotion into some form of activity other than copulation. Sex is one of the greatest of all forces which motivate human beings. Because of this fact, it is also one of the most dangerous forces. If the average man would control his sex desires and transmute them into a driving force with which to carry on his occupation one half the time he dissipates in pursuit of sex, he would never know poverty. Do you mean by your statement that one should not indulge the desire for sex? No, I mean that sex, like all other forces available to man, should be understood, mastered, and made to serve man. The desire for sex expression is as natural as the desire for food. The desire can no more be killed than one can entirely stop a river from flowing. If the emotion of sex is shut off from the natural mode of expression, it will break out in some other less desirable form. 
just as a river will, if dammed, break through and flow around the dam. The person who has self-discipline understands the emotion of sex, respects it, and learns to control it and transmute it into constructive activities. Another benefit is that you make a promise to yourself and you keep it, and then you trust yourself more. However, this can be a vicious cycle where you make a promise to yourself, you break it, you feel bad, so then you keep going back to porn to feel better again, and round and round and round. So this is why you need to break this cycle, but also be kind to yourself. It's not always going to be easy. You've been building this habit for years, probably. You're probably not going to be able to break it on the first attempt, but you want to be able to do it less and less and less and less until you eventually never do it. I'd recommend not building your entire identity around it because if you have a setback or a hiccup like Ice Cold JT has, Gabe Got That Glow has, I've had, like it's not smooth sailing. If you have a hiccup, which you probably will, that could be devastating for your ego. So don't just build your entire identity around as I'm someone who does not masturbate. I'm not just a person who doesn't masturbate, I'm a person who crushes their goals, improves my life, helps other people, gets in shape improves financially. Same with many things in life. If you go to the gym once and you look in the mirror, probably nothing's gonna change. You go to the gym again, you look in the mirror, nothing's probably gonna change. But if you go to the gym for two years and you don't miss a workout and you train hard and you eat well, you're gonna see big changes. So same with many, many things. The biggest gains come over the long term, the consistency, which many other people fail to put in the work. Even when it's boring, even when it's tiring, even when you feel like giving up, quitting, relapsing, you stay strong and that's where the big benefits are going to come in because there's nobody willing to go to the lengths that you are to keep doing it for as long as you have. You don't just want to be someone who doesn't do something, you want to be someone who does things and that is also a habit that you have. That's not, oh I'm on no fat, I just don't fat, that's it. Don't be the person who's trying to quit, be the person who has quit. It hasn't undone all the progress. Instead of training yourself to do it like every day, you're now managed to abstain for say like a month. So you're gonna get better and better at doing it less and less until you're free. Always remember, as a wise man once said, Forget about stop the day focusing count on the day count. And focus entirely start on making, making the, days the days count. Because remember, this is a lifestyle. If you're struggling with this, please let me help you. I wish someone could have told me this stuff and helped me with this stuff earlier. So if that sounds like something you want, check the free link in the description. You can book a free call with me and I'll help you break your porn addiction, build muscle, lose weight, be more productive, or just get your life together generally, or if you just want to have a chat. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you and keep going.